Hey guys, it's been a long time since I've made an unpopular opinion versus, and the last one I did, you seem to really like it. And I'm happy to say, that's my most liked video as of now. And for my channel standards, it's got a great amount of views. So I'm back, and this is another unpopular opinion versus. Now a few months ago, I made a video about my top 10 favorite war movies, and ranked at number 9 was Paths of Glory. In that segment, I stated that Paths of Glory was the best portrayal of Western Front combat put to screen. And my opinion hasn't changed on that, but what has changed was recently, and for the first time, I watched the 1930 film All Quiet on the Western Front, and I totally fell in love with it. If I had seen that before I made my top 10 war movie list, I would have reconsidered the entries on the list. So, today, we're going to find out who's the champion of all World War I movies. Oh, and for the record, I actually haven't seen Lawrence of Arabia yet, so until then, and for now, this battle is for the title of greatest World War I movie. Without any further ado... Let's jump right in. Round 1. Plot. The plot of All Quiet on the Western Front has been seen in many movies. At this point, it's almost a war movie cliche of having young disillusioned kids sign up for the army and realize war is horrible and a terrible experience. But this was basically the first movie to have this plot, and it was way ahead of its time by showing the true horrors of war and how it isn't glorious, but it's a nightmare. And this was made at a time where the public's opinion on war was it was triumphant, glorious, and heroic. So. Given that this showcases and juxtaposed the mainstream view of war, it gives it major brownie points in the plot category. Now, Paths of Glory's plot was actually inspired by a historical event. General Miro orders an impossible suicidal attack on the Ant Hill, a German strategic strongpoint. The attack fails, and many soldiers refuse to advance. So, the embarrassed general orders a court martial of three innocent men under the penalty of death. Penalty of death? For cowardice! This story was very interesting, and it had one subplot which was very necessary to the plot. Now, as revolutionary as All Quiet on the Western Front was, there's not much structured story to follow. It's more like anything goes, and you don't know what to expect, and different things are just launched at you. Like I said, the plot of having disillusioned kids experience the horror of war and lose their innocence is seen in many anti-war films. However, Paths of Glory gives you an interesting plot, straightforward from the beginning, and you have something to follow and track to the end. It's original, and I have yet to see a war movie be structured in a way that gives you a straightforward plot with one subplot and still have the elegance and grace with its context. So, winner, Paths of Glory. Round 2. Characters. The characters of the two movies are polar opposites, and it's interesting to note that each film shows the two sides of the combatants. All Quiet on the Western Front's characters are Germans, whereas Paths of Glory characters are French. In All Quiet on the Western Front, the characters are very puzzling. The group of school friends who join the army in the beginning aren't introduced well. They're kind of just thrown into the movie, and I don't even really know their names. There's only three characters who, to me, actually stand out, and that's Paul Baumer, the protagonist, Kat, Paul's friend, and Sergeant Himmelstow's. Paul's a hard character to dissect, because honestly, he has so many different traits and qualities that he can't really be anchored down and labeled one thing, because there's times where he's shy, lacks confidence, but then he's shown as being comical and outgoing, sentimental, sensitive, and vulnerable, only to be in other scenes shown as a battle-hardened veteran and a warrior, tough and suave. Cat. Cat is a very straightforward character. He's an older veteran who teaches the new recruits how to survive at the front, and he's notorious for being able to find food in almost any situation. And Sergeant Himmelstow's is almost a cliche pain in the ass superior who always nags and is petty towards the soldiers. Paths of Glory characters are so incredible and reflect on many aspects of humanity. The two characters who intrigue me the most are General Miro and General Brulard. General Miro is the worst kind of leader. He's the type of officer with the attitude of do what I say just because I said it, not because it's the right thing to be done. He's the leader who is so detached from his men and doesn't in any way care about them. He's selfish and only worries about his reputation. He's mad with power and a despicable human being. His character totally nailed that type of person. And, in fact, I had a superior officer just like that. Just like Miro. He didn't care about his men, he abused his power, and was totally detached and ignorant of his subordinates' abilities and hardships. General Brulard was interesting because he's the type of person who seems nice, he's charming and graceful, until he doesn't get what he wants and gets angry. Then he shows who he truly is, a pathetic, petty, and spoiled person. And I think these characters were nailed perfectly. They sit in the comforts of a mansion, attend parties, eat fancy food, but they have no care at all when they send thousands to die so they can continue to sit in their luxury. The three convicted soldiers were all different breed of men. Private Farol has a sense of childlike innocence and mannerisms. He's very shy and gives a toddler-like grin when he's happy, and he talks like a little boy. Corporal Paris acts as the everyman type, 
having a wife and kids, and acts like the archetypal man. He's brave, he stands up to adversity, he's tough but has a sensitive side, and when it's appropriate, he shows his true emotions. And Arnaud is generally a cynical nihilist because he and a fellow soldier discuss how most people are more afraid of being hurt during war and not dying. He refuses to atone for his sins when he's condemned to die due to his anger and lack of belief in religion. And let's not, of course, forget about the main character, Colonel Dax, who is at one point described as... He is the best type of leader. He genuinely cares for his subordinates. He actually listens to what they have to say and is one of the most noble characters in cinema. He risks everything, his reputation, his career, his command, to defend the three convicted soldiers. And when given the opportunity to get a promotion to general and a position to leave the trenches and sit in comfort and basically conform to what Miro and General Brulard are, he literally tells a superior to shove the promotion up his ass and states how he'll never leave his men to become anything like the generals. So... I have to give this to Paths of Glory. Winner, Paths of Glory. Round 3. Performances. Both of these incredible movies have one thing in common. The acting was phenomenal. Normally when I'm watching a movie, I tend to see the actors portraying themselves and how they would react in the situation their character's in. Like, I'm not watching The Equalizer, I'm just watching Denzel Washington. But I didn't get that effect for these movies. I was truly convinced by their acting. In fact, these performances were so good, I totally forgot I was watching a movie. I was really seeing people for real. This wasn't Kirk Douglas, this was Colonel Dax. Same for All Quiet on the Western Front. I wasn't watching actors play the part, I was really watching real people in real life, metaphorically speaking. But the actors of Paths of Glory took it up a notch. They gave their own characters individual mannerisms and minor things that were so noticed and genius. For example, George MacReady as Miro. The minor inflections he put on specific words gave them more power and more meaning. The way he delivered his lines when his character was angry was like he was breathing out his lines, like he was exhaling. It, it's hard to explain, so I'll, I'll just show. Miserable cowards. They're not advancing. The barrage is getting away from them. They're still in the trenches. Order 75s to commence firing on our own positions. Captain, do you fail to comprehend the meaning of my order? No, sir, but... I respectfully ask the Captain, Adam. do you fail to comprehend the meaning of my order? No, sir. Then we'll carry it out, Captain. You'll be in front of a firing squad tomorrow morning, that's where you'll be. It's like he's angry and pissed, but he's too classy and proper to show otherwise, so he's trying to compose himself the best he can, but it's not working. Like I said, the way he delivers his lines with a mixture of facial expressions and more emphasis on certain words convinces you he's mad with power. Now, the other actors do, do that too, to an extent, but... George McReady stole the show. He acted the best out of the cast, and I love the way the actor who portrayed General Brulard, I'm sorry, I can't really pronounce his name, but still, I love how he slurs his words and speaks very fast and to the point. I don't know why, but just the way he spoke and held himself was genius acting, so winner, by a long shot, Paths of Glory. Round 4, Sounds and Special Effects. An incredible feature of All Quiet on the Western Front, it's just one of the first talkie movies, meaning it had sound and audio, which made it very popular, and given that the technology was in a primitive and early stage, the audio that came from this movie was very impressive. By today's standards, the sound effects are actually pretty good. Not perfect, but good. Especially for the 1930s. It's incredible, and the explosion effects really look real. The prosthetics and makeup were really realistic. Paths of Glory had awesome explosion sound effects, and the practical effect they used to craft the anthill looked really cool. But there's one thing that bothers me about this movie, and that's the machine gun sound effect during the battle. I hated it. I truly hate it. It amazes me that Stanley Kubrick, a known perfectionist, settled for terrible sound quality. The machine gun sounded more like lasers in a sci-fi movie. And I know that particular machine gun audio was used in a lot of films, but I still hate it and it still sounds terrible. And it takes you out of the mood and it's distracting. Given that there are plenty of movies that had great gunfire sound effects before this came out, it just seems really bad. Having said that, I do like the sound of the artillery, the explosions, and the background small arms fire here during the front line scenes. Those sounded really realistic, and I wish they incorporated more of that into the film. Because of the awful audio in the battle scene, I have to give it to All Quiet on the Western Front. Winner, All Quiet on the Western Front. So we come to one of my favorite aspects of these movies, their quotes. Now given that each of these movies' quotes were featured prominently on my favorite movie quote video, this is going to be interesting. I think the most iconic quote from All Quiet on the Western Front is, When it comes to dying for your country, it's better not to die at all. That's an awesome quote, but I'm not going to lie, I think General Patton watched this movie and it inspired him to make his famous quote, saying, That no bastard ever won war by dying for his country. He won it by making the other poor dumb bastard die for his country.
But Paths of Glory's quotes just don't stop. I could quote this movie for days. In fact, I've used quotes from this film in real life discussions and arguments because they're so effective and poignant. Mr. President, no one in the entire regiment got anywhere near the German wire, including myself. Winner, Paths of Glory. Round six, direction. It's no secret that Stanley Kubrick is widely considered the best director of all time, but that's a topic for another day. I think he did a great job on this movie. Honestly, the shots in the cinematography were very visually impressive. I like his camera work, where he follows the soldier through the trenches in one take. It looks a lot like the steady cam work, but 20 years before it was invented. Therefore, it's not ridiculous to say that this was ahead of its time. I also like the close-ups he had on the actors' faces. Whenever there was an important scene or dialogue, it's interesting to see how the lighting on the set changes to be more darker when an integral moment happens on the screen. It shows the whole atmosphere changing, and it makes you more captivated by it. However, I think that the performances and the screenplay totally overshadowed the direction of this film. Now, All Quiet on the Western Front was breathtaking. It was so ahead of its time. The editing was perfect, the camera angles and the cinematography is straight out of a modern epic from today. The tracking shots were more personally impressive. The close-ups and the editing were actually perfect. It makes total sense that this piece of art was awarded with the Oscar for Best Director. And I think that it's easy to say, without a doubt, the winner is All Quiet on the Western Front. Round 7. Music. All Quiet on the Western Front doesn't really have music. Besides the usual trumpet and brass instrumentals that movies at the time had during their intros and credits, there's one harmonica scene played in the final scene. And true, I did like it, but there's really no music. Paths of Glory doesn't have much music either, but there is that song at the end where the German woman sang the faithful Hauser, and that was a powerful song and a powerful moment. Very poignant. The music played over the credits was actually very enjoyable and could potentially get stuck in your head. You'll be humming it for a little bit. It's catchy. So, since there's no really rivals to it, winner, Paths of Glory. Round 8, Popularity and Legacy. So I need to say right now that All Quiet on the Western Front had one of the biggest impacts on Hollywood than any other film. The camera angles, the directing techniques has inspired many directors and artists. From the awesome tracking shots during battle, the amazing editing between wide shots and close-ups to capture the scope and bigger picture of battle, And one of my personal favorites was the end scene that shows the soldiers and comrades of Paul who died in a ghost-like session before fading to the credits. And its point of view, machine guns being fired at the enemy has been seen and inspired numerous different war movies. It's not hard to tell that when you watch a certain movie, you can actually pick out certain things definitely inspired from All Quiet on the Western Front. And nearly every anti-war film has followed its formula since, and it was revolutionary to have the main character die in the film. That was totally unheard of at the time. Its influence on the genre is noticeable in many films, and it was the first Best Picture winning movie to win Best Director at the Oscars, and making $3 million. Now, during the Great Depression, that's actually very impressive. Paths of Glory, as great as it is, was a box office disappointment, and was completely overshadowed by other huge movies of the same year, such as Bridge on the River Kwai and Twelve Angry Men. So, I think it's clear, the winner is All Quiet on the Western Front. Round 9, Battles. This is the moment all war movie fans were waiting for, the battles. And I'm sure that those of you who are watching this and never saw either of the movies, you're only wondering, how are the combat scenes? And I'm very happy to say, each film did an amazing job recreating World War I combat. Let's start with All Quiet on the Western Front. I will say, the bayonet charge is one of the best movie battles ever. Its sheer epicness and scope rivals that of Saving Private Ryan. It's really hard to believe that something so gruesome, realistic, and incredible was filmed in 1930 where cameras were so bulky and hard to operate. I'm not just saying this, but that scene really gives me chills. And the attack on the cemetery was an awesome fight scene. Now, Paths of Glory has only one battle and a few minor combat scenes, but it was magnificent, minus the bad machine gun sound effect. I think that both film battles come off as authentic and truly look like World War I footage. Not only does it accurately depict the combat on the Western Front, but they're both filmed in a way that is thrilling to the audience. Now... Truthfully, I want to give this one to Paths of Glory, but where Paths of Glory lacks, All Quiet on the Western Front picks up and fills in the rest. So, this round is a tie. Round 10, Portrayal of the War. This is a very important round to me because I'm a history geek, as you guys know, especially on World War I. And All Quiet on the Western Front was inspired by the novel written by a WW1 veteran. And that gives it a massive boost for its realism, because some of the story comes right from a veteran's experience. The two masterpieces accurately show the combat of trench warfare and going over the top. But 
I think that All Quiet on the Western Front takes it a step higher, but not just focusing on the soldiers and their own personal philosophies of the war, but by showing the deplorable conditions of the trenches. It shows how they're filthy, infested with rats. It shows the emotional weight and pain of killing an enemy during wartime. It also gives light on how difficult the Germans had it during the war. It's typical and easy to label the German army as the villains of World War I, because most movies show the Allies and how the German army caused numerous devastation to the Allied powers. And since Germany played more a defensive role on the Western Front, they didn't go over the top as much and face the machine guns in no man's land, like our soldiers did. But... In actuality, they didn't have it any better. German trenches were engineered and constructed to be more defendable and impregnable to infantry. So, they were subjected to higher quantity and more intense artillery bombardment. And that one scene of them in the dugout and the soldier being terrified of the bombs really spoke to me. And it actually, in a way, made me feel nervous for them. I thought if I was in their position, I'd be terrified of an allied artillery barrage. But, not just that. The German people as a whole were starving and low on supply since the British had a naval blockade of Germany all throughout the war. And a common happenstance through the movie was the soldiers being starving and desperate for food. The only thing that was missing from All Quiet on the Western Front was aerial combat. Other than that, it basically showed everything in all aspects of trench warfare. Paths of Glory did a damn good job, and World War I veteran Winston Churchill said it's a really realistic movie. But there was only 30 minutes at the front, or combat in it. Again, when I watched the battle scene of both movies, it truly looks authentic. But... All Quiet on the Western Front truly, truly looks like a person went back in time and just videotaped a battle with real soldiers. Just, just watch this quick segment of the movie for a second. Take it in. Absorb it. Now watch this. This is actual footage from World War I. A real battle. Rare combat footage. Alright, so I added those sound effects, but that was real footage. So now that you've seen for yourself, which one looks like authentic combat footage? And with that, you have your answer. So the winner, All Quiet on the Western Front. Well, my friends, I think the winner is clear and obvious. And for the first time, the overall victor has won the most rounds. So with a score of 6-5, to five, the winner is Paths of Glory. This is an underrated masterpiece. It's one of those movies when right after you finish watching it, you actually want to watch it again. You know how people ask you what's your favorite scene of a movie? Well, this entire movie was my favorite scene. All of them put together make for one magnum opus. So amazing, so incredible. This is, as I've stated, the most intelligent, most classy, and dignified film ever. I do need to acknowledge the geniusness of All Quiet on the Western Front. It lost by only the tiniest of margins, and it's going to stand the test of time. But in the end, Paths of Glory is better. Well, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you see, let me know comment below. If you disagree, share it with me. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the next Unpopular Opinion. This video is dedicated to the recently deceased Kirk Douglas, one of the greatest actors of all time.